welcome back to uh, Mr. D's grade 10 science class. Um, hopefully you've kind of been doing a little bit of homework over the weekend and you have an idea of uh, some of the magnetic lines things we were talking about from last week. Um, this week we're going to go one step further and we're going to talk about a little bit of magnetic shielding. Um, so just to get our minds back in the headspace after a long weekend, um, I want you guys to just kind of talk, uh, turn to each other and talk to each other a little bit about where you see magnets in your life or if you'd like to be a little bit more specific, if you haven't any idea where you might have seen magnetic shielding before. So basically blocking certain things from magnetic fields. So take about 30 seconds and I'll, uh, I'll bring it back after that. Okay, so we all have a bit of time to think, uh, think about it. Right on. So I think I heard someone say doctor's office at one point. Is that correct? Yes. David, okay, so can you tell me where in a doctor's office you would find magnetic shield? Uh, if you're getting an MRI, the, the wall that they're standing on. Beautiful, give the man a prize. Okay, so yeah, not in the MRI machine itself. That's why they have you take off all your magnetics uh, and you can't go in an MRI if you have magnetic plates or anything like that. Um, but the shielding for the people, for the, for the techs, is definitely important. Um, another one that um, people don't think about too often is for speaker appliances. Um, speakers have powerful magnets in them that drive the subwoofers, and if you have that close to a TV, it can distort the image. So you have to make sure you shield the box. And then the last one that nobody really tends to think about is Earth's magnetosphere. And if you look at uh, this diagram here, it's uh, kind of handy. Hopefully you can see in the light. There's a few magnetic lines coming out from Earth there. And I want you guys to kind of keep that idea of magnetic lines in your head because that's going to be important later. So for the setup itself, um, what I have set up here is a little paper clip hanging on a thread, and it's being held up by these two magnets. Just bar magnets, nothing fancy. You can see that I kind of disturbed this a little bit. It's still going to stay up. Um, and the whole purpose of this experiment is to find out what sample of um, substances here are going to interfere with that magnetic field and are going to be important in magnetic shielding. So, to talk about the, the samples here, I have a little bit of aluminum. One of them is just aluminum foil, the other one is a ruler. I have a bit of paper, some cards, and a poster. Cool. A glass that we're going to introduce. A couple of Tupperware lids for plastic samples. Um, this is a little sample of quarters that I've taped together. I've taped it together just to make it easier to kind of put in there. Um, quarters, like nickels, have a high nickel content, so that's our nickel sample. And then the last one is a tin can lid, which actually has um, a decent amount of iron in it. So what I'm going to do is, for each of these substances, I'm going to introduce them between the paper clip and the magnet, and I want you guys to be, uh, be able to Predict and kind of think about. Yes, there's a question. Paper clip made out of. Um, so your question, I believe, it would just be regular steel. So there is a bit of um, iron content there as well as iron part. Good question. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start introducing those. But before we get to that, I'm going to switch over to this. And I apologize in advance because I didn't have time this morning to print off one of these for each of you. But before I get into this, I'm going to have you predict which materials are going to interfere with that magnetic field that's holding the paper clip close to the magnet. So if something sort of like this doesn't have to be very neat, um, just so that we have a, a record of what we're observing here. So materials that you think will affect the field, materials that won't, and then what do you think is going to happen to the paper clip? Is it going to be pulled up stronger because maybe one of these substances strengthens the field? Do you think it's going to drop? It's going to wiggle a little bit? So take about Let's say 75 seconds, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back. Oh, and I want you to explain your prediction as well in the best words you can. If you want to use a diagram, that's great. So go for it. And as you're doing this, if there's any other questions about the setup or what we're going to be doing, make sure to ask. Make sure we're good right before we start here. So as you're finishing up here, 
uh, they're just going to throw it to the class. I want you to think about what a reasonable student might think each of these um, substances is going to do due to the field. Do you think they will or will not affect the field at all? Um, so again, what a reasonable student would think, it doesn't have to be your own answer. Whenever you're ready, just throw it. Yes, Alex? I think that the, uh, the metallic substances uh, will interfere with the uh, field clip, so aluminum, nickel, and iron. Perfect. And the other glass feature and plastic will not. Okay, um, so for the metallic ones, why do you think because they're metallic they're going to affect the aluminum field? I feel it's because they're uh, like they're a bit more dense with uh, the material, so therefore they're the, uh, the, the, there's going to be more um, material that can interfere with that magnetic field. That's All right. It's a great explanation. Um, Yes, sir. I'm confused. Is it is it that it will allow the magnetic force in, or that it will block it? Um, what I want to know is which ones do you think will do which? So let's say for aluminum, for example, do you think it will or will not? Right, but which what? Like what? Like is it, it just says will or will not. She's so asking which curious. what will or will not refers to. Like, oh, will it will, will block or will allow? I don't. I just will it affect the magnetic field in any way? Oh, okay. Yes, is it going to change it at all, or will the magnetic okay. field just pass through? Okay. It, right? Thank you. Good question. Um, okay. Does anyone want to say something about some of the other substances we haven't uh, talked about yet? Oh, uh, well, I don't think paper is going to do much. Okay. Cool. It's thin and I've played with paper and magnets before. Okay, so past experience. It's good. We based a lot of our um, scientific pieces on what we've experienced before, what we've seen, what we've seen, what we've seen. Okay, and someone want to take set one of the last two, glass or plastic? Whether they will or will not? Yeah? Mm, oh, another reasonable student might think that the aluminum and the nickel and the iron would not affect the magnetic field because it's, like, it's not going to change how it works. Like, it's not going to, like, interfere with it. Okay, so no interference. Just put that in there. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have a few different examples on the board, we'll leave glass and plastic as kind of like the uh, controls, we're not really sure yet. Um, so I want you guys to either close your eyes or put your head down, and I'm going to go through each of the materials, and I want you to put your hand up if you think it will or will not affect the field, and I'm going to write down what the majority of the vote was, or whether it will or will not. Okay, and if you can't um, handle this, I'd ask you to step out. It's important that everybody has their eyes closed. Okay, so the first substance, aluminum. Raise your hand if you think it will affect the field. Okay, next one is glass. Okay, the next one is paper. Or nickel. One of the quarters. We got iron. And last but not least, plastic. Okay, open up your eyes. Thanks for voting. Awesome. Okay, so now I think we can jump right into it. Um, if it was a bit of a small class and we had some more time, I'd definitely let you guys kind of play around with the manipulatives and be able to see it yourself. But for the sake of brevity, um, I'm just going to show you guys. Um, if you can't see anything or anything, let me know. I want to make sure everybody observes this. And as you're going through this, if you want to create a little observe section to see, all right, so write down what you're seeing as it goes, and you might just have to ask questions. Okay, so I'm going to start with some aluminum. This one's just some tin foil. Anybody see that? Not a whole lot of movement there. I think the thread's moving a bit just because of the wind and these things. And we'll just do a little bit of All right, so aluminum's done. We'll go to cards, paper. A um, couple cards, no real difference. I think I might have bumped it there, but I don't want to do it. It's that one. Yep, it did. So nothing seems to happen there. Okay. That's the glass. There seems to be nothing else as well. Are we getting this? Got some nickel here. It's starting to wiggle a little bit. If I drag it out, I can get it to fall. I guess I'll show you those two one more time. So you don't 
notice definitely that even before I get in between it, it's starting to kind of push it away a little bit. Okay, so no nipple hustle effect. Let's do plastic next. We said that plastic was a tie. This was the only one where the class was divided on whether or not it was going to interfere. It doesn't seem like it has any effect. Alright, and last one is iron. Real gentle. Ooh, that one's really bad. Drastic. We need to get close. One more time, let's move class to C. Alright, does everybody get that? Does anyone want me to do one of the other ones again? No, we're all clear? Sweet. Okay. So here. Okay, so on the last little section on your sheet, if you can just explain under your observations, um, you know, we, we've seen which of the materials affect the magnetic field. Maybe now you have a little bit of a better idea. Um, I want you to try the best you can to explain what you saw. And I've included this little picture here as kind of a hint. Um, I'm looking for a specific word that I mentioned near the beginning of the PowerPoint. So if you can think of something like that, explain it the best you can, and we'll take it up near the end. I'll give you guys about another minute for that. <clears throat> Consider not whether or not your prediction was correct. I just take a nice, neat notes. I love it. Teacher's dream. So, it seems most of you guys are just about there. So, just to explain it in layman's terms, again, if we go back to the idea of magnetic field lines near the beginning of the presentation, like the ones that the Earth's magnetosphere puts around our Earth to protect us from solar wind, um, what's essentially happening is these... Here, let me turn this off so you guys can see better. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So what's essentially going on is this magnet that you have up here is exuding field lines very similar to the ones you're seeing on the diagram here. And as we introduce, you pretend this is a metallic medium that has magnetic properties in it. As you bring it closer and closer, these magnetic um, substances induce, uh, not induce, sorry, they concentrate field lines in that substance. So as you bring it closer and closer, it's not that the magnetic strength is changing from the magnet itself, but it's being concentrated in this bar and what you get is a region of space underneath where there's no more magnetic field lines and therefore no more pull up. And that's why the paper clip drops and you see the kind of bend when you get it close. Okay? And back into the magnetic field lines. Okay, so any last questions before we close this down? Are we all happy? Thank you so much for paying attention. Sweet.